Hello and welcome everybody, my name is Trovarian and uh, I will show you, as I promised, how to move on from a wire armature to a finished sculpt um, like this. Um, this is not finished because obviously the, the hands are still missing um, and uh, one more thing that I want to mention before uh, I start I am cutting off the legs here because it's going to be part of um, a set of these girls and uh, they're sort of like um, half figures uh, or busts <coughs> and not complete miniatures but uh, it doesn't change much um, I showed you in the last video that I put uh, the armature into some cork actually this is the armature I used um, and it's just uh, the same with this one I did that one practically the same as the other one so for the next steps we're going to need our armature obviously and some sort of air drying uh, epoxy clay and personally I use Milliput standard yellow grey uh, it's a two component epoxy clay or putty that you can buy for about uh, 10 to 12 uh, euros probably a bit more in dollars and uh, what I'm going to do I take pieces two pieces of each of the rolls that are about the same and what I do with this type I usually just get rid of of the, the brown coating and just pick from the inside otherwise it's getting to, to well you, you will have these uh, these things not mixing properly and that kind of can be annoying it's not that much of a deal when doing armatures but if you're doing more refined stuff then that can be annoying so just taking roughly the same amount out um, of both both rolls um, <coughs> milliput can be stored in a um, I just you know you, you can store them in the plastic bags uh, and I put them in the fridge as well I don't know if it's um, if it's really if it's really that much different but if you have space in your fridge uh, you can you can just keep it there no big deal so every time I'm mixing milliput I just uh, start like this because the gray part uh, isn't as, as sticky as the yellow green one so just mixing that one just mixing everything together and that's already starting to get homogeneous doesn't take too long but uh, a few rolls like that then make it a ball again and roll it like that again usually it does the trick for me so yeah looks homogeneous enough especially for this purpose and uh, what we're going to to do is we are creating a base that we can stick the polymer clay on because uh, if you were using polymer clay on a wire that thin um, what you would do is 
you either put it on first of all it doesn't stick well well so you would put it on and if you push too hard you would cut it through or if you were more careful and you would put it on you would have stuff like that going on so for it to better stick um, <clears throat> and it not being cut uh, in half we will actually start by uh, start with the milliput instead of the polymer clay um, two things uh, sometimes you will have uh, this area be wobbly a bit because the super glue isn't uh, holding it together too well um, but uh, of course it's helped in place by the thinner wire we used anyway first of all what I usually do is I apply um, some milliput here so we get rid of this this wobble effect and uh, what I'm using to apply this is usually just uh, a wooden stick you can um, slightly dab it on carefully dab it on and shape it and also you can just use your fingers uh, what I forgot to say is after mixing I usually wash my fingers because it's not uh, the healthiest product on earth um, but for these purposes I will just go on like that um, some people will want to, to wear gloves uh, especially if you're experiencing um, discomfort and itching and stuff like that when you're using when you're working with these types of clay but uh, for these these steps uh, I usually don't do it I just wash my hands after mixing and then it's just slightly um, touching the, the material so this is the first thing I usually do if you want to be extra careful you could um, put it in the oven for a few minutes like 20 minutes at um, 70 degrees uh, Celsius to pre-dry that a bit but that's not a must So the next thing that I'm adding is the hip area. To give it a bit of stability here as well. And the last major thing we will want to add a base for our head so just press that on and <clears throat> make the round area um, point backwards a bit and the more you already know how, where your miniature is going to, to be looking at in the end the better because if you if you know that you can already uh, have this piece be, uh, be rather big because the, um, the, the the more tiny you make it the more you will have the clay actually move on top of that um, whatever you do if you don't if you haven't decided yet uh, you can after it's it's dried, you can uh, cut it um, down a bit, and so on. But uh, anyway, I will push it flat a bit so 
whatever you do, never do something like this for a head. You know, like a like a rod on top of of the of the armature because here you will have the the clay uh, moving like crazy, and you you don't want that. So um, here in the middle, I will just add a a thinner layer. <clears throat> like this and uh, here you really don't have to be too careful just roll it on with your uh, with your stick and roll it here And um, what I'm trying to do is I will not cover the the areas where the where the wires join together too much. Uh, you will see it in, at the shoulder and the um, and the elbow and the knee. Oh well, the hip because the knee that won't be too much um, clay covering that. Since we we don't have any anything below the knee, so just cover most of the wire uh, gently. Don't use too much um, volume. see here I I leave out uh, this area so um, what that will allow me to do is once I covered everything even if I'm not satisfied with the pose I can still reposition uh, the model I'm also going to cover the neck area and usually what I do is I roll out a a piece that is just as long as the neck cut it off if you have to and put it on and roll it out really thin So yeah, for demonstration purposes, I didn't bake this area here yet, uh, and that's why the arms are still moving a bit. Um, what you can do is you can shortly before you start this, just add another drop of super glue here. Um, that way, it won't uh, won't move too much. Okay, so back here, um, this area is not too tragic, uh, it's not covered by any uh, of the mini put, but this area here is already rather thick. Mm. 
I will maybe just give it uh, still give it one pass because this is gonna be really thin anyway your hands at this point uh, will make a lot of sense at the latest because now you're going to add uh, you're going to add the really put to the really delicate uh, areas of the of the armature And here I just do the same. Um, I roll out a piece of mini put like that, and when you wash your hands, uh, it doesn't stick as much to your hands as it does to the armature. And just press it on here. and make sure you cover it in one round or all around like that you can use your fingers or a tool I feel like I have more control with my fingers uh, at this point Like I said, um, you can carefully roll on the clay with with a tool like that, but uh, you will have to find out what's working better for you or best for you. So down here, I will also give it a um, a bit of a, a thicker piece of milliput. That can be a bit tricky when you're doing feet, um, but um, this helps me to to not have. Hmm. I always try to get fresh milliput because I think this one is a bit older and it already gets brittle. Anyway, uh, down here I will have a larger surface. Um, at the end, that's in in contact with the with the mm, cork, so I have it, so it doesn't move too much. That's always helpful. Just roll it on. Well, something's going on here. It's not sticking. like it's supposed to hmm weird okay try it again just prefers to stick to my tool okay let's do the other leg really quickly and uh, as you can see here I didn't cover this joint so I can reposition the legs 
and then we'll do the same here cover most of the leg um, again it doesn't don't be worried too much if you don't cover everything just create enough so that the, the polymer clay has uh, some area to stick to and also this is a, a larger scale larger scale project um, and you can see that the legs will be covered a lot so you don't have to work too delicate but uh, the smaller your scale goes the more you have to take care of that and um, one example is my sci-fi pilot where you have really delicate limbs and you can imagine um, that I only took really really thin layers of milliput below that and it even shows in some areas uh, here you can see the the yellow shine through the yellow of the milliput um, so moving on to the arms this will be a bit annoying because it's it's moving but uh, even if you forget to apply the super glue after it's dry it should be should not be moving anymore and uh, you will see that uh, in the next video okay here I try to be more delicate so you can figure uh, how, how it works for smaller um, pieces Uh, miniput can be a bit frustrating to apply. Don't get this uh, discouraged by that. Make sure you take your time and don't do it like me. I will rush it a bit for the video. Again, here I will not cover the joint of the elbow. So if I'm unhappy with the pose, I can just reposition it. And uh, one thing I will um, I will add at the moment. I will just uh, measure the length of the, the lower arm roughly you can always do that by having your uh, anatomy reference uh, next to you the one I showed you in the first um, picture but I actually am using this this miniature because uh, it's the same scale anyway Alright, and what I'm going to do is I want to add a hand here that's holding a mantle and that's why I will already apply some of, uh, of that volume of the hand here as well. So if you know that you're going to do a hand here, you can already add that. Um, for for you know the this model, I'm going to give her an 
a hammer and she's going to hold it like that and uh, that's why I want to do it separately because otherwise uh, it couldn't be cast mm, if you if you're not if you don't want to cast your pieces and uh, just sculpt them for yourself you can of course sculpt them all in in one piece um, you know just just glue the hammer on and then um, sculpt the hands around that uh, it's really up to you but uh, you will need a bit of planning before before you you start your miniature uh, whether you're going to cast it or not so always keep that in mind before you cut off pieces of your armature and so on alright almost there uh, gonna do the upper arm and uh, like I said you don't have to be too delicate in the larger scales but whatever you do try to close um, the whole thing around your armature so if you turn that around um, <clears throat> make sure that no uh, armature is showing through it's uh, it's not as much as a big deal down here so this is okay uh, this little bit showing through, but uh, it should be closed at the majority of your of your armature, uh, simply because it will start um, coming off if you don't do it. Um, almost there, last piece. The lower arm here. Of course, that wants to be special. Um, always wash your hands in between again, so you can make sure that none of the material sticks to your to your uh, fingers and then pulls off. Um, something that also helps is you can smooth out the mealy put with some water. Uh, don't use too much because uh, it will dissolve the mealy put. But um, I'm just dipping my hands into a bit of water and then I can smooth that out pretty well. Okay, and uh, here I'm not sure if I want to add a hand. Uh, probably we'll, we'll give her a sword that's gonna be cast separately. So I'll just leave uh, leave that. Just um, taking the measure again, how long the lower arm will have to be. Okay, I covered more than it needs to be, but uh, I can always cut away. Um, adding is possible as well but this is probably more of a pain so um, one more thing that I you can stop here and uh, apply your your polymer clay something that person that I personally do is I will add um, a bit more volume on the sides of of this area because I feel it makes my armatures more stable as in mm, uh, 
as in uh, I have a, a more solid base for the um, for the chest and the ribcage. Just gonna fix that. Gonna add a bit more. And I will make this really thin because I don't want to to have too much volume to to either the back or the front. And just this one more piece. And you can do the same down here, obviously. Um, if you get leftovers, you can carefully uh, attach them to areas where you would want initial volumes anyway. You know, here we would have the rib cage and stuff like that. But uh, if you're not experienced enough, just uh, stop here and leave that out to dry. Uh, once it's dry, it will look like this. But uh, you can still move the, the arms. I will not do it because I'm kind of happy with this pose for the next sculpt that I'm going to do here. Um, but yeah. Hope you found that interesting. If you got any questions, uh, feel free to, to post them below the stream in the comments. Don't forget that I'm live from Monday to Tuesday at the moment on Twitch. I will uh, provide the link below. But for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.